Hi guys, so I want to talk to you guys really quickly about something before I get into this week's video But if you don't give a fuck about what I'm about to say you can skip to this time But if you're still here as you guys know I am going on a world tour this summer and I'm so fucking excited I've actually missed touring so much in the last few months I was originally just doing a few shows in a few cities and now you guys have given me the opportunity to go all over the world And do another tour so differently and be able to bring my friends and I know after two fucking months that bus is going to smell disgusting because of all of us staying on it but we are so excited to go everywhere and meet you guys but this week I had a meeting and I decided I wanted to change a few things about my tour about the tickets about the show and everything really quickly if you already bought a general admission or any kind of ticket go ahead and check your email because you can upgrade it for really really cheap but if you did already buy a ticket you will be getting exactly what you paid for but to be able to make what I'm about to say fair to you guys who already bought the tickets you will be getting to meet me for much longer first entry into the venue so that you get better seats and merch items to pay for the difference of what I'm about to say so that everything is fair for everyone if that makes sense but now to get into what I'm really excited to say I'm having a giant sale on all of my tickets for the next few weeks if you have bought a group photo ticket in the past fuck that I just found out what group photo was like last week and I guess that means that I stand there and like 20 of you guys were gonna come in and I was gonna take like 10 pictures like me and all 20 of you guys and then you guys would all get that one picture of me and like you 20 no what the fuck I want to meet you guys one-on-one -on -one. so from this point on group photo photo does not exist anymore you guys if you buy a ticket you will get to meet me and all of my friends one by one personally I want to have personable moments with you guys instead of some kind of weird group photo vibe and now those tickets are cheaper than ever so if you bought those previously you get to meet me one-on-one -on -one. you will get a merch item to make up for the price difference etc you'll get better seats in the venue whatever but if you haven't bought them already now you get to meet me one-on-one -on -one for cheaper for VIP it's a lot cheaper now you'll get a much longer time to hang out with me one-on-one -on -one. basically I'm going to have intercourse with you in front of your parents for an all new price. <laughs> you haven't bought them already. I'm having a giant sale. I changed everything. I will now be meeting every single person one on one. And I'm very happy that I made that change. So the link to my tours website is below if you would like to get your tickets. I highly recommend getting them while they're on sale. And now there will be no Fugazi meeting me with a bunch of random other people bullshit. We will meet one on one. And like I've been saying all along, the show is a longer than ever. We are doing crazy things and telling crazy stories, things I would never be able to put on the internet live and in person for you guys. And all of the things we're doing involve you guys coming on stage which is really sick because I've never done that before and I just confirmed an insane amount of special guests like all of the ones you guys have been requesting and if you get tickets of course you will get to meet them too so that's all I can say for now but I hope you guys are really happy with these updates I want to meet as many of you guys as possible and I want to meet you guys one-on-one -on -one. I didn't like the group photo vibe when I found out the actual move of that so I changed it and to everybody who already bought tickets I wanted to make sure that when I changed it it would still be fair for you guys so I hope everyone is happy and I'm so excited excited to meet every single one of you in all of your cities so please click that motherfucking link below and come say hi and hug me and all my friends and let's have sex in front of your parents okay bye hi guys it's Santa Mojo welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel today I am so excited because I am going to waste the fuck out of your time I was looking through my channel the other day and I realized I have not sat down and told you guys a pointless stupid, melodramatic, first world problem, story time. And honestly, that's how I started my channel. I used to only tell stories like this. And I really miss just sitting down in front of the camera and telling you guys a stupid fucking story for the hell of it, like I would tell my friends. And to be honest with you, I have a lot of really serious, deep, long, not that funny story times that are coming up in the near future, like why I got evicted from my house, my asshole fucking landlord, or a very very fucking weird stalker update that is long overdue. I have some stories about the Teen Choice Awards and like Dr. Phil and all that kind of stuff, but those are all really like deep, heavy stories that are gonna be like 30 minute long videos. And today I've just been in the happiest, bubbliest mood and I wanted to just sit down and talk to you guys like the good old days and tell you a stupid fucking story. So that's what I'm gonna do today. But before I get into the story, make sure to subscribe if you already haven't and turn on that little bell so you get notifications every time I upload, which is Tuesdays and Fridays now because I'm a professional fucking YouTuber. <laughs> make sure to follow all of my social media for when I'm not posting, but that's fucking never now because I upload all the time. <laughs> like I said in the beginning clip, I am going on a world tour so the links for that are below as well if you want to come meet me and hang out with me and my friends for a cheaper fucking price and all of my merch and stuff is below as well but now I'm going to get in 
to the story. So before I actually get into the fucking meat of the story, before I get into the fucking breast of the chicken of this story, I want you guys to put your feet in my shoes. I want you to feel empathy for where I stand on this deeply emotional matter. So I'm gonna walk you through a time of my life. I'm a girl, sometimes. <laughs> I like accessories. I especially like purses. I used to always interchange my bag per outfit so that they would match for each outfit. Growing up, I was never able to afford designer items, but I was always obsessed with designer items and fashion and luxury and well-made things and like fashionable pieces and like runway fashion and all that kind of stuff. And after starting YouTube, I was so grateful to be able to on occasion afford a really nice designer piece. And I bought some really nice bags in the past and I liked them and all but they weren't the one you know so I ended up giving them to my mom or they would sit in my closet and I would carry them on special occasions and one day I was scrolling through my Instagram feed being the basic hoe that I am and I saw a photo of Kylie Jenner with this small black and red Louis Vuitton backpack and as the weeks would go by I began to scroll through Instagram and Kourtney Kardashian had it I saw Simply Nessa 15 carrying it I saw Sydney Carlson carrying it I saw Maddie Bragg carrying it I saw Rihanna carrying it it's like like everywhere I went on social media, I was seeing pictures of this bag and I decided I fucking wanted it. It was black and red. I always only wear black, white, or red. I knew it would match every single outfit I wore every single day. So it was a practical purchase. I like backpacks over purses because then both of my hands are free because I have a big giant dick and I don't like to carry a purse like a fucking lady. It was a small bag so it was the perfect size to be lightweight and never hurt my shoulders or anything like that. I could just put, you know, like my wallet in it, a portable charger, maybe some chapstick, a receipt. The bare necessities could fit in this bag. I could take it to music festivals because it was lightweight, it'd be on my back. I could travel with it on an airplane because it would hold just my passport and like a boarding pass and a few more items. Nothing would get, you know, mixed up. I would never have to search and dig through my bag. And on top of all of that, it's like the hot new item right now. Everyone has it. It's super fucking trendy. I needed this bag. I went online to the Louis Vuitton website to see that it was sold out everywhere and my world was shattered. Shattered. I finally found the perfect bag for me, my brand, my lifestyle, my day-to-day -day living and I couldn't get it. But then one day, by fate. I was walking through the mall with Isabella and Amari and we weren't even shopping for me, we were shopping for them and there was a little Louis Vuitton store inside of a Neiman Marcus not even thinking about the bag. At this point, I had told myself you're not gonna get the bag, it's too hard to find, every celebrity has it, it's sold out everywhere, whatever. I decided to peruse into the Louis Vuitton store simply to look at other bags or for a wallet, maybe a pair of sunglasses, an eau de parfum. And as I walked in, behold, before my eyes was one of this little backpack sitting in an enclosed glass case with its own lighting on it. The fucking Beyonce of purses. And so I look at the worker and I'm like, I want that bag, please get me that bag. You don't even understand, I've been on a manhunt for this bag and it is sitting right there. And so he goes to the back of the store and he's like, I'm sorry, but like we're all sold out, we don't have any. The only one they gave us was this one to put on display. But I don't think I should sell that to you, it's not new, like it's beat up. And I was like, no, I'll take the display, gladly. I don't care if it's beat up, I don't care. I want that bag, take it out of the display, please sell me the bag. And by the grace of God, he took it out of the display and he sold me the bag. I didn't even take a bag from the store. I didn't even take tissue paper. I didn't have him box it up all nice. I literally paid for it and put that shit on my back. And from that moment on, this bag and I were inseparable. We were star-crossed lovers. Going to the grocery store, Tana's gonna take the bag. Going to a music festival, Tana's gonna take the bag. Going to a concert, Tana's gonna take the bag. Flying anywhere, Tana's gonna take the bag. Walking Lumen down the street, Tana's gonna take the bag. House is on fire. Precious memorabilia is burning. Tana's gonna save the bag. Fuck my friends. Burn in my house. I'm taking the bag. No, I'm just kidding. And everyone around me would honestly almost give me shit for it because I always was changing my bags out all the time. I was always carrying different bags. I loved accessories. But all of a sudden, it was me in this bag. We were riding or dying. We were fucking rocking for each other. We were fucking friends till the end. I took her everywhere. 
And so like three months ago, I got the opportunity to go to Australia on tour and meet you guys and I was so stoked. I never thought that sitting down in front of my camera and making these fucking horrible videos would take me places like that. And I immediately said yes. I knew it was an opportunity of a lifetime. The second I get off of the call from finding out that I'm going to Australia, I could have told my mom. I could have told my friends. I could have told my family. I could have told anyone on my team. I got off the phone and I walked over to my bag and I said, we're going to Australia, baby. And she sat there as beautiful as ever. But little did I know in that moment, she wouldn't come back from Australia the same. She wouldn't come back from Australia the way she was sitting in that moment. And it's fucked up. I owed her more than that. So the time comes to go to Australia and I'm going with my manager, Jordan. Jordan is a very key component to this story. So I hop on the plane to Australia. I get in my bed on the plane. I'm just napping with my bag. You know what I mean? We're cuddling, whatever. I land in Australia. So the bag, Jordan and I, immediately start our adventures in Australia. It's show after show, city after city, airport after airport, flight after flight, me, Jordan, and the bag. I'm taking the bag on every plane. She is holding up so well. I honestly think she was having just as good of a time in Australia as we were. She's holding my things better than ever, if anything. It's almost like I'd broken her in and this was her fucking prime. So we're in Sydney, Australia, and we show up to the venue that day to go ahead and do the show. And all I had taken with me to the show was my bag and an Australian flag, another key component of this story. So at every single show, I had been running out on stage with a really big Australian flag and like taking pictures with you guys and stuff. And it was just kind of like my, my thing, you know, like I'm in Australia, <laughs> I travel, <laughs> yay kangaroos, like, you know, you get it. And so it's finally time for me to go on stage. I leave my bag in the green room. I take my flag, I go out on stage, I tell you guys a story, I come back off stage with the flag, and we're all about to leave, and I look at Jordan, and I'm like, hey, will you hold this flag and my bag while I go to the bathroom, and I like change clothes, and like freshen up and stuff. And Jordan's like, yeah, I'll hold your stuff. And so while I was in the bathroom, getting ready and freshening up, Jordan took it upon himself to fold the Australian flag, which was much thicker and larger than my bag. Keep in mind, she was fragile and she was small. She wasn't a big bag. Doesn't mean she didn't have a big heart, but she was in a big bag. My wallet was literally bigger than my bag most of the time. She was a very petite girl. And he violated her. He shoved a giant Australian flag into her until she was bursting at the seams. And then he zipped her. Imagine, put yourself in her shoes. You can't breathe. You're full to the brim. Someone's pushing your zipper closed and you just can't do it anymore. So then I come out from the bathroom and I'm like, where's my bag? Where's the flag? And he's like, here's your bag. I put the flag in the bag. And immediately I dropped everything. We weren't leaving anymore. How could you put the flag in the bag? I said. I folded it up and stuffed it in there, he said. Why would you do that? The flag is clearly thicker and bigger than the bag, I said. I didn't want to hold the flag anymore, he said. I'll just unzip it. I'll take the flag out. No big deal. I said, I began to unzip the bag and to my surprise, I found that the bag would no longer unzip. She couldn't do it anymore. And so I began trying harder. Shortly after, I realized that the flag was stuck in the lining of the zipper. But like I told her from the beginning, it's me and you, baby. I'm gonna get you out of this and I'm gonna fix it. You might be a little hurt, but I'll be here for the healing process. I wasn't even mad at Jordan. I went into fight or flight mode. Like when someone's having a heart attack or someone's dying or something's going on that's tragic, you don't cry and freak out. You go into let's get it done mode. You go into I'm gonna save you mode and that's what I did. Jordan, help me. I don't know how to get this out of the bag. You put it in there. Please help me. I said, okay, give me the bag. I'm gonna go find something to get the flag out of the bag, he said. And then he left with her. I didn't know in that moment that she wouldn't come back the same, but I'm happy she went out happy. So when Jordan left, he went and found one of our tour managers and she and him decided that it would be the best, most viable, intelligent decision to take a pen and jam it through the zipper's tracks until a hole was formed and to pull the flag out of the hole. Imagine you like get your tongue pierced or something and for some reason one day you're eating and the tongue piercing comes unscrewed and you swallow it and you go to the doctor and you say, hey, I swallowed my tongue piercing and the doctor looks at you and says, okay, I'm going to stab you in the fucking thigh and reach through the gaping wound in your thigh into your fucking stomach to pull out the piercing. Would that be logical? No, it wouldn't be logical. So like 20 more minutes go by. I'm sitting in the green room just freaking out about my bag, but I'm trying to remain positive. I'm 
sending good prayers and good vibes her way. And Jordan brings me back the back. I immediately look at the expression on her face and I see that something is wrong. I'm gonna give you guys a little demonstration. This is how a bag zips normally. Each side of the zipper's mechanism is attached to each side of the bag. When the zipper begins to zip, the two sides come together and are now holding each other together and holding the bag shut. See, I can't open the bag now because the zipper zipped it. When my bag was stabbed by Jordan, they stabbed through here, creating a large hole, making the entire zipper mechanism detach and only be attached to one side. So for example, that would be like this zipper is zipped like this, but then there would still be a big gaping hole because the whole zipper would be attached to like this side. So even when the bag was zipped, it would still be wide open because the zipper was now only attached to one side of the bag because she was fucking stabbed. In this moment, I had no words. Jordan found it slightly comical, humorous even, that I was this worked up and or hurt over my bag's fucking death. So the rest of the Australia trip went by. There was nothing I could do about the bag while I was there. I was still putting my things in her and carrying her around closed with my hand because I didn't want her to feel like even though she was damaged, she was useless. Like just because you're damaged, you're still good enough for me. And I kept telling her every night when we went to bed, don't worry, when we get home, I will fix you. You are my ride or die. So I get home and I go to the Louis Vuitton store, I show them what's wrong with the bag, they write up a damage report, and they tell me that unfortunately it's going to take six weeks to fix my bag. Knowing that I would have to go six weeks without someone I love that much shattered me but I knew that it was for the well-being of the both of us. And then in six weeks, she would come back the way she was. She would have a good rehabilitation, a good retreat, maybe relax by the pool, get fixed up, love herself again, and come home to me, and we could continue living life together. So for the well-being of our relationship, I signed the paper, shed a few tears, I kissed and hugged her goodbye, and I sent her away. Four weeks go by. I get a call from one of the workers at Louis Vuitton, and they said, your bag is here at the store. Come in and see it. I was elated. They said it was gonna take six weeks and it only took four. I had visions of her and I embarking on new adventures, running through fields together, her properly holding my stuff, me carrying her, posing, us looking great with our black and red and white ensembles. And so I walk in the store, I walk up to the worker, I'm like, hi, I'm here to get my bag. They were fixing my bag. It's here early. Can I just have her? I'm so excited. The Louis Vuitton worker looks at me. She says, unfortunately, Tana, we have some bad news for you. And I'm like, okay, maybe it was really expensive, I'll pay for it. Or it's gonna take two more weeks, it's fine, I'll wait. God forbid we even have to trade out for a new bag and I have to reincarnate her and her soul into a new beautiful bag. And she looks at me and she says, no, we sent your bag away and your bag was unrepairable. And we can't fix her. The entire zipper mechanism is attached to one side of the bag and the bag is too small to sew the zipper onto the other side of the bag. And unfortunately, we can't fix your bag. And she goes under the counter and she pulls out the corpse of the only thing I loved. And she lays her on the counter, her dead fucking body. And I say, okay, what are my options? Can I get a new bag? And she says, that's the other thing. This bag is the most popular bag that Louis Vuitton has sold in like the last 10 years. As you can tell, every celebrity had it. You actually got one of the only four bags that were ever sent to Las Vegas. And I said, okay, are there any stores in the United States that sell them? I'll reserve it, I'll pay for it right now, I'll have it get mailed to me. And she says, no, unfortunately, it's sold out across the United States. And I said, okay, are there any internationally? And she goes, actually, there is one in Tokyo right now. Things were looking up. I said, okay, I will buy the bag from Tokyo. I will pay for the shipping. It's fine. I just, I need her in my life. And so she gets on the phone to Tokyo fucking Louis Vuitton. She calls. She tells them about the bag. She says that there's one left. She's about to order it. And as she's ordering the one bag that was left in that very moment, someone bought it in store. So she hangs up. She tells me there are no more left of this bag. Can I get on a wait list? Unfortunately, this was a limited edition collection. And now that the bags are sold out everywhere, Louis Vuitton is done selling this bag. Oh, okay, can I get something else black and red pattern? I love that bag so much because I'm always wearing black, white, or red. Brown Louis Vuitton pattern doesn't always go with that, but black and red went with everything, so I was willing to settle for any shape of bag if it was black and red. Unfortunately, ma'am, this is the first time Louis Vuitton has come out with a black and red pattern 
in the last 30 years and we won't be doing it again for another 30 years. Okay, then I guess I will just take the corpse of my bag back and I'll try to fix it myself or get a specialist to fix it. Well, you see, ma'am, when you buy a Louis Vuitton product, you sign a warranty saying that within the next 10 years or so, if your bag breaks in any way, we will fix it for free, just like we attempted to fix your bag. But if we can't fix your bag, the fine print of the warranty that you sign says that we now get to keep the bag so that we can reduce, reuse, and recycle and recycle the leather into making more bags. We also don't want our customers carrying damaged versions of our bag, so if we can do anything to stop that, we do. Hence why we put this clause in the contract that you signed. She proceeds to pull up a warranty that I signed when I bought the bag, and I'm like, no, no, seriously, it's fine. You don't have to tell anyone. Like, it's sitting right here. Like, I will just take the bag. I'll walk out of the store. I'll pretend like it's mine. Like, please. She pulls over a tag on the bag that literally says shred, a toe tag, if you will, and says, no can do. I could lose my job. I'm like, can you call a manager? Please, can you call a manager? I am the manager. But don't worry, ma'am. There's something we can do for you. I'm like, okay. We can give you three fourths of your purchase price of the bag to put towards another item. It's not about the money. I loved her. I fucking loved her. That's my best friend on the counter. Dead, 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 dead. So I walked through the store. She was a very kind woman and she was of a lot of sympathy to the most tragic loss I've ever lived. But all she could offer me was to pick out a new item. A nice functional piece. A nice suitcase holds my things. I'm thankful to own something as sturdy, nice, practical, lifetime warranty, seriously awesome investment. I'm very grateful to own this. But this isn't family to me. This is a material item, a suitcase, a rolling box for my belongings when I travel, if you will. It's not family. And so the next day I go to Los Angeles and I tell Jordan the horrible consequences of my loss. I tell him how I had to look at her in her dying moments. I told him how I told her everything was gonna be fine and I let her down. I told him how I sent her away thinking she was gonna come back brand new and we were gonna live life together again and that I had to look at her dead and wish her goodbye and all he had to say was, you should make a story time about that. So here I am. Jordan, if you're watching this, um, I love you and you're an amazing manager and the things that you do for me are incredible. You are an incredible human being. I don't know where I would be in my career without you, but you murdered the only thing I love. And I will never be able to let that go. Yeah, for everyone asking where I'm going from here or how I'm dealing with this, I'm not. Every single time I put a black or a white or a red item on my body, so like right now, <laughs> I can't help but relish in what once was. And she may be gone, but she's never forgotten. To all of you in life, take it day by day and don't take things for granted. If you're having a good moment with someone or something means a lot to you, be grateful for it and cherish it because you never know when someone's gonna stuff an Australian flag in something that you love until it bursts and dies and you might lose it forever. So that's my story. If anyone is still watching before I end this video, I would like to have one moment of silence because I know that's what she would have wanted. I told you I was gonna waste your fucking time. <laughs> That story time was definitely an ode to anyone who has ever called me dramatic. <laughs> On a serious note, I really do realize that material things aren't what make up life. It is your loved ones, it is the people around you, it is the memories that you have, it is you guys, it is this family. I'm not actually that materialistic. I just feel like I've been through a fucking journey with this bag and I needed to share that story with you guys and I thought it would be a lot more entertaining if I just dramatized the fuck out of it. <laughs> because then no one can give me hate for being over dramatic because like I know <laughs> I love you guys so much and I hope that you enjoyed that story if you guys want to tell me in the comments below if you've ever had something that you lost or you damaged that you loved and you can never get it back I would love to hear your story I can empathize with you I'm gonna link Jordan's Instagram below so that you guys can go ahead and go leave comments saying rest in peace Tana's bag 2017 through 2017 so that her lifespan and her beautiful life that she lived is never forgotten if anyone at Louis Vuitton is watching this and you would like to help me get that bag back, I would be very appreciative.
All right, guys, on a real note, I hope you enjoyed this story. If you would like to hear some more stories about some more serious, actual, under-dramatized things that are going on in my life right now, please let me know in the comments below. Like I said in the beginning, make sure to subscribe, put that motherfucking bell on, follow all of my social media below, come meet me on tour, and I will talk to you guys in the next video. I love you so much. Thank you for watching, and I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.